right, get your coffee ready. In this video, I'm going to show you how to uh, use parameterized inputs in a really common use case where you want to query SQL with an identifier, uh, how to do that without creating an input for every unique identifier you want to query. All right, sip of coffee, let's get in it. So I'm running as a service, uh, completely blank project. So the first thing, uh, let's see, the first thing I'm going to do is create an OSI soft connector. I'll use that for this demo. I'm going to create one versus search for one. Need more coffee. Uh, so I'm going to go in and get the Pi system. Um, no, I don't have it. One second. I just need to grab the IP address for that and our setup. And, and you could use OPC. You know, you could use whatever you want. But I want some real-time data coming through. That looks good. And then I'm going to do... That looks good. All right, so I'm going to go to the inputs. I'm going to browse. Uh, inside of this demo server, there's some, I think they're burner machines, demo demo setup from Pi. So I'm going to go into kind of bury into equipment. <coughs> and, and for this, I'm just going to pull in two. So I'm going to pull, it, pull in the 210 and the, and the 235, just as an example. And this is really, I'm just trying to source some real-time data. So you see I can do the read, and then this is kind of the real-time status of the gas flows, et cetera, through those machines. Um, so the other connection I want to create is a SQL connection. So let me jump over. And in my SQL connection, so let's say Pi is providing me kind of the real time what's going on in the machines, and I've got a maintenance system somewhere else that's scheduling, you know, maintenance tickets and kind of you know, events that are occurring on the maintenance side of the house. And let's say my interface into that is SQL. So I'm going to create a SQL connection, uh, put in my credentials. Again, this is just on my local box. Uh, I'm going to create an input in here. Let's just make sure I have, and we're good. So I have a maintenance table. Uh, what I'm just going to do is select everything from that for maintenance. And I'm going to call this, um, we'll call these pumps. Pump maintenance. Uh, I'm going to save that. Hit execute. Select all from more coffee. Uh, it's a slow start to the day. Uh, all right, so here we go. Really minimal, right? We've got an asset identifier, a note from what happened, the technician ID, and then a timestamp of, of when it occurred. And if we pull this up in SQL Explorer, you'll see I just have three items in this table. Two of them have the same asset identifier, and one is one is different. All right, so I've got two data sources. I want to mix real-time data with the maintenance data. So I'm going to go in here, and uh, I guess we can call these a burner because they're, they're not pumps. Uh, burner... And what I'm going to do is, um, I'm just going to just keep this really simple. I'll add a flow rate. I'll, I'll add an asset ID. Um, and then I'll just put events. <coughs> this is my data model. Right, so, so now what I'll do is I'll go create an instance of that. And I could use templating, you know, the 2-4 stuff to go simplify this. But I'm just going to use input parameters because that's what I want to show. So I'll call this um, burner210. And it's going to be based off the burner model. And in here, now I can you know, drill down. I see the 210 input in Pi. Uh, and I think in here there's a flow rate. Fuel gas tag, fuel gas flow. So I'm going to pull oops, I'm gonna pull that in. And then the asset ID in Pi comes from the element name. And uh, lastly is event. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select my other input of SQL. And I'm just going to pull in the maintenance data. And right now you can see there's, it's returning the three rows that are there. So I'm just going to submit this. And I'm going to hit read, and this isn't this isn't what I want, right? So what I've got here is I've got, you know, the B210 data, real-time data coming from Pi, and then events include everything, where this is my real asset ID in the maintenance system for this machine, but I'm getting the other one. So what I want to do instead is I could go create separate inputs like I did Pi and do that, but now there's a way better way to do it, so let's go do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a parameterized input. <laughs> and the way to think about this is I'm going to write a where clause, this is a string, so I've got to surround it in quotes. And I could pass in the identifier directly, right? So if I went in and just copied this one, for example, this, this would be the, this is the, way, the way I do it before. I go create inputs. Each one would have its unique ID. Um, select all from database. It might need to be caps where, oh, <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, what's the field name? Asset is equal to, SQL's getting rusty, so there you go. But what I want to do is parameterize this. So instead of literally passing this in, I'm just going to do asset ID. 
And now when I run this by default, it's going to fail. I could turn on templating and provide that default. So if it's not provided, it gets a default asset ID, but I parameterize the input. Now up in modeling, what I can do is in the 210 case, I can pass what I know is the input. So I'm gonna say asset ID equal to, in this case, I'm just gonna hard code it because I'm creating unique instances anyway for each asset. I'm gonna paste it here. And now when I do the read, I'm only gonna get back events for the asset. So now that I've done this, I wanna go create my other instance for 235. I can clone this. I'll call it 235. And what I'm gonna do is, again, I could use templating to, to streamline this much, much better than manually changing this label. But in this case, uh, oops, sorry, hide that. Uh, I'm gonna go copy the other identifier for 235 and pass that in instead. So I'm controlling what this input is reading by via the parameter. And I'm showing this over SQL, but it would work over MQTT, webhooks, any number of use cases. But now you can see I'm only getting the events from here. So rather than going to my SQL connection and having you know, inputs for every asset ID, I have a single input that takes a parameter and I can control that at the instance layer. So that's a very common use case. It really simplifies that in terms of limiting the configuration. Uh, go give it a shot and uh, enjoy.